National Science Week, Uganda launched her first satellite, which brought a lot of excitement to Ugandans. Now, today we are at the Faculty of Science and Education, which is one of the six campuses of Busitema University. Now, today we are here to find out more about the space science program that the physics department started. My name is Amuge Victoria, and you are welcome to the Education Forum. I show that they just the trends and development in the education sector. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right, to start our first conversation, joining me on the show is the vice, the Deputy Vice Chancellor of Bustema University Faculty of Science and Education, Professor Samuel Becker Kuchel. Welcome, sir. Today we are in the Faculty of Science and Education, that is the Nagongera campus. We are having um, a stakeholder engagement on the global navigation satellite system. We we have installed the system now here with us at the, the Department of Physics. We thank uh, the, 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 the South African uh, National Space Agency for uh, donating the equipment of the value of about 30,000 US dollars, say 500,000 South African rand. And we hope that through that equipment, the university can collect data, you know, a lot of data on weather, uh, which can be used for many applications. Yeah, many applications and uh, even the data on uh, survey, you know, mapping. Eventually we can even develop capacity like it's already done in other countries. Even tracking wildlife, tracking uh, forest resources. The, the capacity is enormous. Yeah, including even the security applications. Yeah. So we are very happy that now we have the system and over the years, the university has been developing capacity. In fact, I'm proud to say that in the Faculty of Science and Education, we now have many experts, you know, in the area of uh, space science and, and, and the technology. Okay. And we hope that they, they will continue training more. And today we have had many of our students are now interested in doing further studies in space science. And that is in line with what even the government is thinking because the government wants us to develop capacity in space science. For us as a university, we have already decided that the Faculty of Science and the, 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 the Institute of Space Science is going to be established here, and now we have started the steps towards the full implementation of that institute. Okay. The human resource capacity development, we have now started uh, installing and operating some equipment, and we shall continue you know, through collaboration and through our own investment. Yeah, and we hope it will benefit the region as you have, uh, you have heard today from the experts. Even the small farmers in the village can benefit when we tell them that, look, don't put your crops to dry outside and go away because it will rain in two hours. So those are some of the benefits and many others which will come to our society. Okay. Yeah, and speaking about space science, um, it's, an interesting, it's an interesting project that, of course, many people may not know much about, and many may be asking if there are really employment opportunities with space science. And with the rate of unemployment in Uganda, um, what would you say about employment opportunities for someone who takes on this project, or this program? Yes, you see, as a university, we, do, uh, we train for two, two reasons. In the past, the focus of... Uh, university training was on job seekers, you know. Over the years, as you have said, that the, the, the job placements, uh, they are there, but they could be few in certain areas. The focus should be now on job creators, you know, people who can use the knowledge and skills that they have acquired from the university to start up their own businesses. That's why we incorporated entrepreneurship you know, into all our programs, so that they have that entrepreneurial thinking. When they complete, they don't really need to first think of looking for a job, but think of what can I do with the knowledge that I have. But luckily, in the areas of space science, these are the prior areas which have been highlighted by government in the, national develop, uh, the third national development plan. These are areas where we still even have gaps, even for the next few years. You know, we have gaps, we don't have the people and we are really contributing to that. But we want to do both, even people who can uh, start their own business and employ others. Yeah, that will be very good for our country. Yeah. And the fact that you're, you're planning on um, creating an institution 
specifically for space science how exactly do you plan on putting this in place with the fact that space science seems to be a very expensive project to start up yeah it is very expensive uh, if you look at the total at the end but uh, you start small you know you start first of all i told you we started by building capacity of our staff so that they are ready and now we are putting up equipment we shall continue adding the next step we are going to develop curriculum and uh, there are two levels one we are going to develop for training at a higher level uh, those experts who will help us in the space science but also curriculum for training teachers because as you are aware government is also trying to create awareness at lower level primary, secondary, so we also need to train now the teachers. As you know, the, ma the, ma the main mandate of this faculty is to train science teachers. So we are going to come up with the curriculum together, uh, working together with the National Curriculum Development Center, with a good curriculum which we can use to uh, train those teachers. Okay, so in the start of this program, um, there must have been a number of challenges you have faced. Uh, in terms of equipment, in terms of finances, and so much more, the, the numbers and all that. So how has been the process, the journey of coming up with the, this whole space uh, science project? Yeah, the journey has taken a bit of time, yeah, because you consultations, you know, if you want to start, we had to first of all look at what is the government plan, the government program. And you know, government, as you are aware, is also trying to create its own uh, center for space science. I think you are aware about that, and I think a team even came and, and inspected our site, and we hope uh, for the best. So, consultations, you know, many consultations were made with stakeholders to see how best we can, uh, we can do it, what we need, you know. So we, we start with the easy things, like the building capacity, we send our, 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 our staff to institutions where already they are experts, you know, like South Africa has been supporting us, they have been training our staff, they are even willing to come and give us uh, more technical uh, assistance. So we are doing that and now we are looking at adding more equipment. I hope by next year we will be adding more small, we just add small by small as we build capacity. Mm. Well, talking about uh, sending some of the students to some of these uh, other institutions and so um, I realized at the workshop that uh, there are a number of people, stakeholders that you're collaborating with. Uh, who are some of those stakeholders and what importance is it uh, in the process of this whole space science project? No, the stakeholders are very, uh, very important, as you heard from the workshop. You know, space science in itself is uh, multidisciplinary, so it cuts across various disciplines. You know, uh, we have many stakeholders in government, like um, one of our key stakeholders, of course, is the Minister of, 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 of Science, Technology and Innovation. They have been helping us uh, from the beginning, you know, they have been coming, you know, having discussion with us to see how we can improve our capacity, even linking up with other international partners. So we have really benefited uh, from government. But we also have other universities, like you had the Mbarra University of Science and Technology. Some of our staff trade from there, of course, through linkages with the South African universities. So we have all that, uh, that network, which is really helping us. Well, that is very interesting. That is nice to know that you are collaborating with uh, countries like South Africa. And even and now so we more. planned more because as you see, this uh, global navigation satellite system is being set up uh, in various countries. Even our neighbor now, Kenya, has it. So Ethiopia, uh, Gabon, Nigeria. So we are going to enter into all that network where we, can, we shall be having student and staff exchange and even sharing of information and knowledge. So well, the few. Yeah. So uh, Bustama University being known for its innovations in science and technology and creating a, a program as amazing as this one. Do you have any plans on uh, you know, creating other programs in relation to space science or something similar to this? Yeah, there are many other programs which will, uh, will, will come. I think you heard it from the head of the department, you know, astro, astrophysics. There are many other you know, astronomy, there are a lot of other related uh, programs, satellite communication, 
you know, even navigation in general, which cuts across many fields, including avionics, even uh, maritime, you know. So there are a lot of other programs which will come here, which will now feed, as I said, it is multidisciplinary, which will now help feed into this uh, uh, space science. <laughs> Right, so joining me on the show is uh, Dr. Mabayo Emirant Batilas, who is the head of the physics department here at the Faculty of Science and Education, Bustama University, and is also the lead person in the space science research. Welcome, doctor. Thank you very much. All right. Well, uh, space science seems to be a very broad, uh, broad field. So please take us through what exactly space science technology is and astro, uh, astronomy. Yeah, when you talk about space, in layman's language, I can say look at the, the environment between the earth and the sun. Okay. Yes, all this we can call it space, except that it can be characterized in terms of the layers. There is the upper space, there is the lower or near earth space. Well, basing on all the things that you've talked about, the earthquakes, the natural disasters and all that, uh, why exactly was the space science introduced in this faculty? Our interest here in this faculty is uh, multidisciplinary. We do both the, the celestial ob observation of stars and so on. That one we did it in 2009 when we had 100 hours of astronomy. Because we have curriculum in astronomy here, we, we also study those. And then we also have this space science where we look at communication satellites. We also look at navigation satellites. This thing called global navigation satellite system. Global in the sense that it covers every uh, activity that occurs across the world. And in this, you can get so many things. We, you can monitor total electron content. Total electron content is when you are looking at something along the line of sight, how many electrons are on this path to the satellite. Because the receiver is here, it is looking at the satellite at an angle. So if you can count, mathematically we count by using a process called integration. If you can count all these, you can tell what is the total electron content here. And that total electron content defines the medium through which our signals pass. If this thing is not uniform, at one point you find huge, at one point you find a very small amount, then therefore there will be a fraction of signals. Because when light travels from a medium of one density to another, of different optical densities, that light will not go straight. It will have to undergo deflections or refractions. And that is dangerous for communication, because what that means is that your communication will be changed drastically this the strength of the communication will go down that's why we sometimes talk about hey there's no network hey they, they, i'm not hearing you <laughs> you are not hearing somebody because okay. the signal strength has changed well doctor during your workshop and uh, now being the head of the space science research during the the, the presentation at the workshop you talked about uh, having a specific quality of research that you do exactly so research requires a lot of time it requires a lot of finances it requires a lot of patience so what what quality of research do you conduct and how exactly do you do this research uh, I can tell you I, ha I, I and my colleagues we we have been trained by very good people I studied in South Africa I got a very good training and therefore the research we do is, is exactly the same quality of the training we went through. For us, in Uganda, like for example in Uganda, before we had this uh, uh, cinder receiver here, we have some GPS receivers in this country. Many of them are not operational. If they are operational, they are not operating so well. You find today there is no data, maybe power is not there. There's no information that you can rely on. So when we came to the country after our training, we st in my PhD, I decided to do a research which will allow us in a position like uh, Nagongera. If there is no data in Nagongera, there is no receiver here. But there is a receiver in Mbale. I use a mathematical approach to develop a proxy that can allow me to pick an instrument here and they use it to see the data that would have been there in Nagongera. 
okay. neighborhood kind of and we interpolate and we get exactly what should have been here and they did that work we have stepped it up now we are able to without even seeing that we can start this in the lesson because we can now use the ordinary gps what we call a proxy to be able to study uh, in, lesson. in any part of Uganda, because now we have a, a model that can predict information within Uganda. So, in science, if you don't have it here, but you have somewhere, you can develop a model to interpolate between the, the stations, and you still get something better. Well, uh, a natural disaster. The quality is very good because we publish our work, we say our work within the national partners, and if you just go type my name in the internet, you will see the publications, you will see even the citations, that shows uh, the quality. And the papers are published in high impact uh, journals. And of course, you cannot publish a paper in a high impact journal if the quality is not good. So here we, we do quality research because we know what it takes to put up a quality research outcome. We collaborate with our colleagues, we use data from across the region and sometimes even abroad to be able to be sure of the information we are uh, looking for. And one of the things we are targeting is communication. We can now tell when communication can be affected. And my friend has been presenting their real-time data in Uganda where you can see the, the medium change from good to bad. And we put in the emails and telephone numbers of people who are affected and once that thing starts happening immediately they get a message on their phone or on their email telling them there is something this is all coming out from prediction we are now modeling uganda as a scenario using uh, the data in uganda and this equipment the sender here is going to take us to the next level because this equipment has all the capabilities of space related data that we want well that is very interesting mm. now one of the key points that was uh, mentioned during the the workshop was the fact that uh, uganda has been experiencing natural disasters like earthquakes yes. drought and so much more landslides from the 90s mm. right from the 90s so as Uganda as a country, having had such disasters over time, mm. what, 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 what difference are you going to bring to the table now that you're starting space science as a faculty? What are you going to bring that is different, that wasn't done before? Yeah, very good. You see, the, the problem statement is that uh, currently Uganda's uh, disasters are not well mapped. Mapping means to be able to locate them in real time you are able to tell it is going to happen tomorrow or the, after tomorrow before it happens you should be able to tell you map it in a way that you are able to tell it is developing something is going to happen this thing is not yet mapped in uganda and to do this you have got to use a ugandan data to be able to uh, develop a model over uganda and this model should be able to uh, predict in terms of the parameters we are using. For example, if we are using a precipitable water vapor, we can be able to tell at this point in time, these values are not normal ones. You get it? Then, because the model is, is, is outputting something, for example, if it is telling you, this, like the way people test the blood pressure, if I can bring it down, there's a normal blood pressure range for a normal human being. So when you measure the blood pressure and you find it is above the normal, you know there's a problem, isn't it? They will tell you this is too high, you need to adjust this and that. So that is similar to our research. When we see the, 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 the behavior of the parameter that can tell us about the development of floods, landslides, because landslides you can be able to tell. One, rainfall is one of the causes of landslide and the texture of the soil. So we, we can go down to the satellite data, analyze these things, develop a model, and the model will tell us from the way we are seeing it's about to come to rain, and the rain, when it comes, what is the quantity, the amount of rain that is like, if it is heavy, we know this will definitely affect the, 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 the place through landslides. So you tell the people, tomorrow it's going to be dangerous, move away. That is now a lot. We send those alerts earlier. 
So the difference we are trying to bring out here is this. We, we are trying to map disasters which we are not mapped before. If something has never been done before and we are now doing it, I think we are making a contribution. Because we now can tell with this type of equipment, we can tell how these disasters are developing and their evolution can be tracked using set, set like that. Because now we are doing it real time. As it is happening is where we are seeing it through the model. So we shall be able to be map these disasters and when we work together with the like ministry of disaster preparedness when we uh, combine our efforts then we provide information to them and this, they will share this information with the police implementers and save life of people who would be affected by landslide if they are not told early enough All right well talking about uh, being able to map some of these natural disasters, disasters. yes uh, you mentioned in your presentation that uh, one of the factors the, some of the factors that leads to natural disasters is the fact that there is inaccurate climate forecast so yes what do you think are the causes of this inaccurate uh, climate forecast and how do you think this issue can be addressed very good uh, I can tell you you know prediction models for weather are based on how did you develop the, the model and what did you use? These models have got what we call uh, model coefficients. Model coefficients are like a, a parameter that relates the variables. Like if I say y is equal to mx plus c, that m, that gradient m is a coefficient. It will influence the values of y if I put in x. You understand? Very good. So yeah. now, that model coefficient, in most cases, the global models we are using, the coefficient was not derived using Uganda and data. So those models are not ours, but they are from a place like ours. You see that point I'm making now? Yeah. Now, if we are going to use our own data to train the model, to be able to derive our coefficient, those coefficients will not be for Kenya or any other country, but for Uganda. Now, therefore, they will be able to predict Uganda and weather accurately because we derived them from here. So we only need to go down and validate these models and get our only coefficients here for Uganda. As simple okay. as that. Okay, as we are calculating the, all that mathematics right here. <laughs> yes, here. And we have done that before. Well, That's the, what the, we the were presenting there. The equipment has been, has been put in place already. Yes. And I'm sure that the process took a lot of work, a lot of hard work, yeah. and so much more. So how was the process of developing the whole uh, space science equipment and putting it in place? Yeah, what well, it look like yeah, the, 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 the truth of the matter is these equipments are built. It's not like uh, you can build it in this lab. Because these equipments are designed and then built by engineers, just like uh, engineers who were sent to go and build Uganda satellite in Japan. You, if Uganda had capacity, it would have been built here. The reason why they went to build it in Japan is because here it would not work. So this thing, we are getting this uh, equipment uh, from Sa South African National Space Agency because we can't build it here ourselves. For us to build it here, and then we must put in a lot from the beginning up to the end to be able to come up with a satellite. So at the moment, there are few companies that can do this thing, but we can acquire it, configure it. In other words, put the software that we need to get the information we want here. It's like somebody has already built, it's like a phone. If you already have a Nokia phone, somebody can use the Nokia phone software and develop ITEL, isn't it? Something like this. Okay. So we are just, we, d we never built this ourselves, but we know how it works because the input into these equipment comes from scientists like us. Then the engineers go put in their effort to design it and build it, and then it comes out as the equipment that we want to use to do the work we want to. Well, the space science equipment seems to be a very uh, interesting machine or equipment. I don't know how I should call it machine. Equipment. Yeah, okay, equipment. So uh, help us describe exactly how it looks like. Like how does the... Now, I, 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 well, this thing has a, what we call an antenna. Antenna is like something like a triangular form. It, I wish we, would, uh, we were next to this equipment. It is inside that I would have showed you. Mm -hmm. This is the antenna we are talking about. Yeah. Yeah, it has antenna. 
and then it has a, a, a receiver. A receiver is like a receiver is like something like a we could call it a hard disk, but it has cables, of course, entering here and so on. So, so is that where the information of uh, uh, the, the information the from the antenna or... comes and enters the receiver, okay. and then it is now taken to the server. Interesting. Yes, to the <laughs> server for archiving the data. The okay. the server now keeps the data. But the information comes from the antenna on top of the roof, and then it is channeled through to the receiver. And then from the receiver, it is also taken out using another cable to the server. Okay. And then you can now get the data from the server. That is interesting. It is just nice to hear scientists talk. <laughs> <laughs> it is interesting to see scientists talk and the whole mathematics and disasters and all. Yeah, it takes that time for us to, to study this. So yeah. it. You know, I, I spend a lot of my time in, in, in studying these things, so it's interesting generally. Okay, so Dr. Mabai, you talked about uh, this project having beneficiaries and also more values. So could you like tell us more values of this project? Yeah, for, ex for, 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 for uh, let me start this way. Actually, this idea did not come from nowhere. This thing started when the president picked interest and directed the uh, Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation to work with partners to develop a space program in this country. And all this spanned off from the uh, African Union because all countries have now signed an agreement to go digital. And this, this means that you must be ready to go into space science because that's what it means to be digital. You have to interface with space-related uh, gadgets, equipment, to be able to fit in the digitalization. So here, President directed, and then we were later identified as experts to go and, uh, and start debating how do we handle the presidential directive or initiative. And I think we have been having meetings uh, with the Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation at one point. We developed the necessary uh, policy guidelines. We also moved around to Benjamin. I personally, in 2019, from 24th to 28th June, uh, we were sent to Russia to go and Benjamin. I went as an expert of space science. I went with Professor Tiko de Togwa because he was by then ED of Kira Motors. So we went to represent this country in benchmarking how our space program would go because government wanted mineral exploration so many capabilities from our space program so we went to benchmark we came back and wrote the report and they told us uh, now what do we go for we said earth observation telecommunication uh, navigation and so on we gave our recommendation and then oil exploration minerals and so on. all that we gave it in writing now they said okay ministry of science technology and innovation so we come up with a document and present it to cabinet. And all this was done. Cabinet received, cabinet passed it, and we were heading to establishment of centers for space science. And this Busitema University, Nangara campus, was cited as a center for human resource training. Because the, the experts of, of this training are here. And in Barara, what? We have them here. We are two experts here in space science. Now our number has increased. We are now four or five. Barara has some, and we keep working together with Barara. So we have produced people, and we now want to work with these people to help in the national space program. Unfortunately, the work that we did that time was lost somewhere in the in the process of transforming the ministry. And I think we want to start, continue this. Our beneficiaries we are targeting to partner with the UNIMA, Uganda National. Meteorological Authority, because they, they don't, they are not an, a training institution. They get staff from training institutions. We think we can work with them, train the staff they need, and we can work with them and and produce human resources that can address this problem of the country. And another one is uh, we also have uh, uh, the D Ministry of Disaster and Preparedness looking at the disasters. If we work together with this ministry and map these disasters, then we shall have worked together to solve a problem that they will be yearning to solve. 
We have key partners in the country, by the way. I, I think uh, uh, we hope that we will be able to accept each other and work together. We have the capacity to help and we only need to be accepted to work on this problem and we shall get it. This is not a difficult problem. Many counties have done it and we are equally trained and we can do that the All same right. thing here in Uganda. <laughs> There is still so much to learn about uh, space science and yes, joining me right now is uh, uh, Professor David Olema, who is the Dean of the Faculty of Science and Education. So yes, Doctor. Yes. You take pride in the excellence of uh, academic programs in this campus, that is the bachelors, the PhDs, the masters and so much more. Now how are these programs related to space science? Great. Um Faculty of Science and uh, Education is a uh, multi-subject and uh, in this faculty there are so many uh, 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 departments and courses uh, that are offered here. There is the Department of Biology, Chemistry, Physics, Mathematics and all the others including Geography and the only special courses here are of language uh, because all these things need language. And uh, the, the national interest now in, in Kiswahili as well, that is what is uh, pushing that. And the issue of uh, entrepreneurship, uh, those are the only courses that we have here in agriculture. And um, um, that is at bachelor's level, and I told you of uh, the certificate level that we had, higher education access certificate, where we pride ourselves as the, the pioneers who did this in the country and eventually coming to uh, the fourth route. However, today our focus is uh, space science. Yeah. And there's a lot that we've talked about space science. You possibly have heard from the uh, DVC and head of department uh, of physics. I just want to focus now on the, on the graduate programs. We have other graduate programs here, the Masters in uh, Educational Leadership and Management, Masters in Educational Psychology, Masters in uh, Industrial Mathematics, and I think it's the only one in the country, then Masters in, uh, of Science in Physics. And uh, the Master of Science in Physics is where we uh, have uh, 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 those who specialize in uh, space science as well. And at the moment, we are... Uh, uh, working towards having an institute of space science. There is already a draft of the curriculum for uh, uh, space science from undergraduate. And one of the graduates of uh, the head of uh, 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 department at PhD level is based at National Council, uh, National Curricular Development Center, who is working on curriculum at secondary level for space science. And uh, as you heard earlier on, it is a very important thing that, you know, this uh, human resource uh, uh, development, as I usually go, the mandate of a university is to train the human resource. And that is where we have the teaching and learning. And then research and innovation, that is for really transformation uh, in uh, a connection with the human resource of a society. And then we go to the outreach and what you have here today is a, a stakeholders uh, workshop where we are uh, 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 helping the stakeholders to understand and we are coming to the point of uh, uh, creating awareness of space science. You recently uh, 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 celebrated the launch of uh, 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 a satellite and all this satellite here needs a receiver down here and we uh, in this today because we received uh, uh, satellite information receiver at this faculty from uh, South African National S uh, Space Agency. This receiver will receive information from almost all the major satellites, the American, the Russian, the Chinese, the, all that. And so all that information there will be uh, processed here and research will be uh, 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 reports will uh, come from here. Now, this faculty, among the many faculties, the, the other uh, six faculties of this university, uh, has space science as its 
uh, center of excellence. Each campus has a center of excellence. Ours is space science, meaning this is where the focus of the university is, this is where the focus of research and everything should be related to this, and a lot of uh, 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 investment should be well, put in this. all that, yes. um, why exactly is this space science program the center uh, of excellence? Center of excellence for, uh, for, for this, um, because the, the various faculties identified the unique and high quality uh, 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 human resource in those areas. We also have uh, the, the, the uh, natural products uh, scientists here. Actually, it is the health sciences in Mbale of this faculty that is uh, uh, having that center of excellence. But the chemists come from here and we couldn't have the two here. Okay. And so it is good to, 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 to have a multidisciplinary approach. So the science, the science itself is here and that is why we have the center of excellence uh, the space here that is unique. No other university is having it. Uh, no other faculty anywhere in this country is having it. So this would be the first place and the first uh, 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 graduates of uh, space science from uh, uh, University of Cape Town are actually here. Well, yeah. it's also clear that uh, for one to qualify to be part of this space, uh, space science or to be a lecturer mm. in this faculty, then you've got to have uh, extremely high qualifications. Yes. Why is this the case? Um, one, I should say that uh, for you to be a lecturer, the, the minimum qualification according to the National Council for Education and uh, uh, the public services, you should actually have a PhD minimum. Oh, okay. And then you progress that direction. And those who have masters are uh, assistant lecturers. So a full lecturer starts with a PhD. And so somebody with a PhD is uh, qualified fully to, to start teaching at the university. Now, a master's is where you learn to do research. You master the theory, you learn to do research. And the PhD is where you do the research. Uh, so uh, from that, the promotions and the levels of an academic staff come with the research outputs, innovations, and so on. That is the direction that we're taking. So that is why we are having that high caliber of uh, uh, academic staff in this place and that is where uh, uh, that's the direction that we are taking and so it happened that in this country the, the, the really qualified high caliber space scientists and those who took interest in space science the, the first two are here mm -hmm. that's Dr. Mabaya and Dr. Andima and the supervisor is uh, in, uh, 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 the supervisor in South Africa and based in Sansa, that is South Africa's uh, National Space Agency. And so um, it only is fitting that it should be here because the first qualified space scientists are here. Okay. Now in your presentation you mentioned something about uh, starting an institute for mm. space science. Yes. Now how exactly, what measures are you taking? Uh, to establish an institute for space science. Okay, okay good. Um, what the faculty does as academics, what we can do within our means, one is to develop a curriculum, and I already said that we have a draft curriculum for space science. The second thing is continue with the uh, graduate students uh, research in space science and uh, uh, strengthen the linkages with the uh, 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 interested uh, stakeholders and one of it is now the uh, uh, collaboration with University of Cape Town and it is through this collaboration and uh, uh, a sense that we actually got this high-valued uh, equipment in this uh, in this faculty today so these are the steps that academics do and then uh, appeal to government lobby the government to take this up and uh, this is the future of the country in ICT and as we move to the fifth industrial uh, revolution. Lobby government through the university to be able to uh, enable us to have the infrastructure that is needed for this place. 
Well, you talked about something to do with inter and intradisciplinary approach yes. in research. Yes. Um, elaborate more on what this yes, exactly the means. Yes, the inter interdisciplinary approach here is uh, this space science application is not only in physics. We did talk about uh, the uh, PhD programs that we are having here uh, that are coming on board soon include a PhD in uh, um, uh, uh, conservation uh, biology in uh, uh, nature and conservation. And in this, there is a lot that they can do together with the space science and the information from space science. It is easy to map uh, from the information that is available and from the satellites, the likely places of this. And you also did uh, hear that, you know, you can actually even use information from, uh, from satellite to track specific, if you want, game. Mm -hmm animals that in desert and so on. If you want to track them, you can track with that and you'll know in real time where they are and what is happening. That is good information for, for biodiversity and conservation of a PhD. And also agriculture, we have a, 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 a faculty of agriculture here and other universities that are uh, doing research in agriculture and whatever this for accurate weather predictions, accurate disaster predictions, and so that is a lot, even with the security and all that. Well, Doctor, during your presentation at the workshop, you mm. talked about something to do with infrastructure being, I think, one of the biggest challenges yes. that you are facing yes. as a faculty. Yes. So what measures and plans do you have to make sure that this uh, issue is addressed and put in place? Um, at the level of uh, us as uh, uh, academics, uh, the dean is the head of uh, 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 a faculty, the academic, the represent uh, uh, representative of the VC, the, so to say. What we do is to, to develop plans and programs and submit them to, to the uh, university authorities. For example, this faculty already has its master plan. We have a master plan, we have allocated land for space science, specific for space science. And then to take care of uh, biodiversity and whatever it is, we have allocated land for, for uh, 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 botanical garden. And that is where we're actually collecting uh, very important medicinal uh, uh, plants and conserving them. And that is going to be like a reservoir. And whatever we collect and propagate them there. And so there's... Uh, a lot of uh, 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 activities that we do here, and all these are set in our plan. Right. Yeah. Um, space science is clearly a very huge and, of course, expensive program mm. to work on. And to bring it to light, that means there are a number of funds you have put in place. So, in terms of figures, uh, how much it was spent in the equipment and uh, the okay. whole program uh, in general? The this is uh, just a very small uh, equipment and most of them come by uh, uh, collaborations and projects written. The telescopes you saw around, this was one by the, the, the head of uh, 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 department for the 100 years of uh, astronomy. He wrote a project and he was, uh, I, I think, the only one in Eastern Central Africa who won that. Okay. And so the, the, the telescopes uh, had to come here where he is. And then the second thing is because he was an excellent student, his supervisors keep following him and they keep writing and publishing together. And he wrote this also to them. And uh, because of that, they were able to send this equipment to this uh, faculty. And then already we had uh, identified all this. This had a lot of uh, advantage for us in the faculty to be able now to plan for this. Uh, for infrastructure, infrastructure is a typically, it is a capital development issue. Faculties don't de uh, budget for fac uh, capital development. Capital development we propose and is budgeted for in the university. And our appeal is actually to interest um, um, uh, Minister of Science and Te Science, Technology and Innovation in this. And uh, the president himself to take interest in this because he is he has uh, demonstrated his interest by actually investing in the satellite 
and a sustainable development and monitoring of the satellites and many more to come. And that information that will also be of, uh, of security interest, navigation interest, uh, uh, disaster interest and so on, is actually what uh, the government needs to invest heavily in. The issue is the information has not reached him that much. An initiative was started in 2019 when uh, uh, the telescope issue came. Uh, what happened is now there was a, a merger or whatever it is of the ministry and so on and so forth. That information must have been lost somewhere. But I'm very sure the members of the ministry that time may not be there, but the university is still here and the experts that wrote are still here. If Ministry of Science and Technology and the President's Office is interested. That information is with us and they can access it. You, you know it very well that, you know, uh, ordinary people don't go to see the President. Yeah? <laughs> and it depends on who of goes course. to see him. <laughs> yeah? But if he gets here and he gets hand on this, it will be a superb thing and I think he will take it up. And one of our targets will be the police, military and uh, 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 aviation experts all these other groups, that is where the voltage spinner comes in. Yes. Okay. All right, Professor, as we wind up, uh, um, if you were to meet the president, mm -hmm. uh, what exactly would you talk to him about in concerns with this uh, program? Um, I'll tell the president, one, I'll uh, congratulate him for taking interest in uh, uh, in uh, 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 the country having a satellite in space and uh, i would tell him the reliance on as it is expressed in his ways that you know the reliance on the foreign experts should actually end in that and more people should be trained in space science from here with the experts who are ugandans and who are already here in this campus they are available they only need resources and a small tap for the government, this will be pushing a squatting man. And so he, his attention should turn here as well and should actually interface with the experts themselves and get to learn a lot more. And such presentations are very good for him to see and to interact with them. He's a very intelligent man. True. Uh, and then he <laughs> can ask the questions directly there. He sits there, that man understands a lot more. And then that is what I would tell him, you know, get these people and listen from the horse's mouth, not reported and all the time. There are people who have a lot more uh, uh, interest in doing that. You know this. Mm -hmm. As academics, we're not politicians and we're not going to be, you know, do, doing, uh, going through third parties and so on. Between Direct presentation. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, thank you very much, David. You're welcome. It was nice having you on the show. It's always a pleasure. Nice having you too. Come again. And come with the president next time. Of course we will. He's You're watching welcome. right now. <laughs> <laughs>
I think the foundations of this project were born a long time ago. Um, we have some researchers in South Africa who are considered experts in, in space weather and uh, the academic staff at the university were actually former students um, of our researchers in South Africa. So when we sat down and we decided where we wanted to deploy these instruments, um, we looked at uh, the former students and where they were located and um, how well equipped they were set up. And yeah, when we considered Uganda, um, it was an easy choice uh, because yeah, we've got these champions um, that are very well known to us and yeah, they've got a very good setup. Um, but more sort of importantly, um, the drive to succeed and to expand you know, the program here. You know, so we decided uh, to install this instrument here at Busitema University because yeah, the infrastructure is here and the expertise are, are here and the collaborations are already existing. And um, yeah, we feel very confident that it's gonna be a success. Well, uh, with the number of natural disasters and climatic change all over the world, um, if every country was to have a space science program, what kind of impact do you think this will have for the world at large in the future? I think the impact will be huge. Um, the risk of Arctic technology falling prey to the adverse effects of space where they are very real, um, a lot more now in the past 20 years than it was in the past because um, we have developed so much technologically. Um, you know, we are all connected, everyone has a cell phone, everybody uses the internet, you know, so if we were to lose that capability, it can impact us very heavily socio-economically. So, Prevention is always much better than the cure, um, you know, and sort of the money and the resources that it takes, you know, to monitor and forecast and hopefully mitigate the adverse effects will far exceed the cost of um, having to replace something if it uh, breaks or um, if you lose access to it. Well, uh, based on the fact that you you have more interest in Uganda, like you had mentioned before, are there any other programs that you plan on um, partnering with uh, other universities in Uganda, in, or this university in particular? Um, so there is a, already a collaboration uh, between this university and Mbarara University, and I think that will continue uh, to remain in place. But um, I think the data from the instrument should be made available to any research or anybody in Uganda that wants access to it. Um, we are very sort of open about our data sharing policies. If um, you know, there are s students or researchers that want access to the data, that data should be available for free. Um, and and yeah, it can be provided. <laughs> To further discuss astrophysics and space science, uh, joining me is Dr. Edward, the head of the physics department, Mbara University of Science and Technology. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. All right, so when we speak about space science, it is a very interesting topic and an amazing one for that matter. And you're one of the heads that spearheaded uh, this project, and it's a very big one, okay? So what exactly prompted you to start such a big project? Uh, thank you very much. I think that's the question people always ask when you talk about astrophysics space science. They ask why. And I think uh, if you can follow much of the technological developments, they started from astrophysics and space science. Okay, now you know that in astrophysics and space science, we change the, the laboratory to space. And this is very far. We look at very long distances where light can take millions of years to reach us. So now, for us to get information from there, we need to think. You see, for example, if you look at the, at the internet, all these ones came from astronomy. Because now, once you send these instruments to the space, you need to get the data. How do you get the data from the space to the Earth? So that's how internet came up. Of course, taking pictures, the images that they take, you need cameras, digital cameras. And of course, that's also how the digital cameras developed. It's also communication. Now we have wireless communication, the mobile phones, where they all start from. Because they need to communicate from, from the ground here to the space. So you can see that much of the technological development, much of the engineering, started from astrophysics and space science. I think that is what motivated us to go into that direction. Okay. 
and you have this partnership or relationship with uh, the faculty of science and education Busitama University and you're yes. from Barra University yes, yes, yes. and I'm guessing that this relationship is for a specific re reason so how important is the relationship you have okay now you know our lessons our our, our, our collaboration with the Busitama University is to train scientists to train scientists and the, you know scientists are very crucial in this development now, for example, you know, recently we sent a, a satellite in space. And of course, without scientists, that would be useless. Because much of the data that we get there will be analyzed by scientists. To make use out of that data, we need the scientists. So how to get the scientists? We need to train them. I think much of our collaboration with Bishop University is to train these scientists. And we train, we train them through postgraduate programs. We train them in masters, we train them in PhD, so that they can make use of this data, so that it can make sense to the local people. Well, this is a project that is new, that is just starting, and so many people don't know about it. And uh, at some point, it may be put in the curriculum or something of, of that sort. So how do you plan on encouraging uh, students or people that are looking for programs to do when they join such an institution? How are you encouraging them to take on okay. uh, science? Now, I may not say that it is new, because all this started way back around 2002. Okay, to, um, to that's when we started this program. But of course, we have very many avenues of reaching out to students. We have out, outreach programs where we reach out to students. Of course, we go to secondary schools to educate them or to give them talks about astronomy to motivate them. And of course, also, this is one of the areas where you can motivate students in sciences. You see, many of the, develop, of the, of the developing countries, actually, this is an avenue that they use to motivate their, their, their students. So we have outreach programs. And of course, another way, could be, of course, engagement with the media. Now, like now, as we are talking with you, now many people are listening, and of course, they also be motivated to do space physics. But I think it has taken some step in Uganda. It's not really new, because we have so far trained many students in masters, in PhDs. We have trained them in Uganda, so it's not really new. Well, also being a very huge project and a, a very, <laughs> a very big program of the sort, there must be uh, a number of challenges that you face in okay. this department. Okay. Yes. Science. Yes. There are there are challenges. Mm -hmm. There are challenges. Of course, you know one of the biggest challenges is money. Money. Remember, our first focus is training human resource, and this needs money. But that one, when it comes to equipment, we may not have much challenge because the space community they all they are united. They're united. For example, now we have this equipment which is installed here. We have one in Barara. Of course, there are many all over the world. So normally we share that when it comes to training of students. So the biggest challenge for now is the resources, particularly to cover the local costs that we may need. But when it comes to equipment, when it comes to, to data, that may not be a big challenge. Okay. Now, who exactly are the beneficiaries of such a program? The no. Day? Okay. Now, this program benefits almost everybody. Everybody. Now, if you can, if, if you follow the, 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 the information, even the farmer there, you know, much of these things can go into weather prediction, you see, disaster prediction, which affects the local person, the farmer there. You see, the farmer needs to know maybe when there's rain season or when it is dry season. You see, and of course, this one can be accurately predicted through such studies. Of course, not where you're going to predict that there's going to be rain and there's no rain. No, here you can get accurate. And of course, also with, the, with some other issues of flooding and so on. These ones can be predicted early. And of course, also, you know, there's also communication, which comes in, you see. And also, also effects on, the, on, 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 the, on the technology, for example, electricity. If there are a lot of disasters happening up there, it can have impact on this one, which directly affects the local person. <laughs> With space science trained in Busitema University, Faculty of Science and Education, well, Uganda is destined to have accurate data in natural disasters, climate change, and so much more. Well, that is all we had on the Education Forum today. My name is Amuga Victoria. Until next time, bye-bye. Inspiring Uganda.
BBC Inspiring Uganda Civic Chamber. Now it comes amid a report recently broadcast by France 24 that showcases Ukrainian soldiers in their attempts to hunt down so called pro Russian collaborators. Now, Artis Marina Kosarova had details with me in the studio just a little bit earlier. Yes, it's a good thing that they're talking about it so that at least people know that it is happening so that eventually if we see pictures like what we saw coming out of Ukraine with people tied, for example, to uh, lampposts, which is something that we've seen, we'll get to that in a second, we know where it was coming from. So let's get back to this report. So 